first time we heard that they were thinking of switching to the Flint River, we laughed. We thought it was a joke. We knew that industry had dumped in the river for a hundred years and didn't clean it up. When I heard of the possibility that there was lead in the water, I, it was a call to action. I had to figure out if that lead in the water was getting into the bodies of our children. We did see this increase in the percentage of children with elevated lead levels. We were absolutely heartbroken. We were in crisis mode. It was a real tough time. So you had parents who felt that they had neglected their children, no fault of their own. The ultimate fix for a lead problem is to get the lead pipes out of the ground. So that was the, the kind of the central and primary goal of the case. Every agency tells us from the CDC to the American Academy of Pediatrics that there is no safe level of lead. This is about protecting children. This is about partnering with communities to help them use um, environmental laws to protect themselves. I personally was very moved by the mothers that I spoke with, both our clients and other members of the community, because they were, you know, they were advocating for their children. Their children who they feared had been exposed to lead. So when people started calling me an activist, I didn't know what that meant. I, you know, I've never been anything like this before. I, I didn't understand that my voice, just me standing up yelling and screaming for my family, was actually becoming a voice for other communities. We went to the courthouse. Our clients were there. Um, lots of members from the community were there. I stood up in front of the judge and said, you know, here is what we've been working on. Here is what we're asking you to approve. And the judge, you know, accepted the settlement and entered it. Today is a great win for the city of Flint and an unprecedented outcome in a case like this. Our clients were thrilled. Flint proved that even while poisoned, even while worried about surviving, that we're not just victims, we are fighters. We were just so happy and honored that we could help them. And it just was surreal that all this work, the year and a half we'd been working on this lawsuit, that it had come to a settlement that was actually helpful for Flint residents. And that was the number one thing that we went to do, was to get lead service lines removed, and we accomplished that. There's still a lot to be done. So we have this great settlement agreement that requires the city and state to do a lot of really important work in Flint to protect people's health moving forward, but it has to be honored and enforced and so you know we're going to be watching every step of the way to make sure that the city and state comply with their obligations and if they don't we'll be back in court.